Have you had a good run? I am the first influencer before that word even existed. If you had not had success with Perez Hilton, what do you think you'd be doing right now? Who knows? You could have a vision for your future and life will be like, nope. Wildest thing you've ever done. Being Rihanna's bitch in her s and music video. <laughs> okay, I like that. You think you're gonna stop soon? I want to, yes. The reason that I still work as hard as I do, I have to. I don't have a few money in the bank. Hey family, it's Carlos Watson. Guess who's stopping by? Perez Hilton. That's right, celebrity blogger, celebrity gossip king, and now serious entrepreneur. You're gonna love this conversation. Hey Perez. Hello. Nice to meet you. You too. Look at you, you've got a real fancy set and everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, only for you, only for you. We don't bring this out for everybody. Well, thank you for having me. Have you traveled at all during the uh, pandemic or have you been pretty? We've traveled, but only driving places. So we've gone to Big Bear, we went to Palm Springs, we went to Vegas. Have you changed during the pandemic at all? You know, it takes such effort to unlearn what was programmed in you from a young age. My coping mechanisms, unfortunately, when I was young, were to self-soothe with food. So during the initial months of the lockdown and just craziness, I gained 32 pounds. That's very unhealthy and it took effort. I worked really hard to gain all of that weight, okay? <laughs> I don't even want to think about it too much because 2020 gave me PTSD. It's like, if I go back there, it's like, ah! But on the plus side, it pushed me into therapy. And I've now been in therapy consistently since the end of 2020, and I've found it to be so helpful. And you have little ones now, yes? Yeah, I have three. What kind of dad are you? I'm trying to suss you out. What kind of dad are you? An awesome dad. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a surprise for you guys. Oh my God. <laughs> We are, we don't even know what we're doing. I think I'm very fun and encouraging, but also strict, you know, like we don't watch much TV during the week. You have to do your work for school. You have to practice piano. This song is called My Daydream. One, two, three, one, two, three. I just don't want my children watching a lot of television, nor do they have devices either. I really learned from my upbringing what I thought could have been better, and that's how I implement things now. You know, I grew up addicted to television. It was like to an unhealthy degree. What you talking about, <laughs> Lou? I didn't do any physical activity when I was young. I hated it. I was a real unhealthy kid, but my kids, they do Taekwondo, they do swimming, they do tennis. Our next guest has been called the most hated man in Hollywood. Perez Hilton, celebrity journalist. Perez Hilton joins me tonight. Have you had, in your mind, a good run the last 15 plus years that you've been running uh, Perez Hilton? It's been an unparalleled run. I mean, I think I am the first influencer before that word even existed. You know, I helped artists launch careers and introduce then unknown acts to the masses. And I was an it girl. And like a lot of it girls, careers evolve and change. And I'm grateful that all of these years later, I'm still in the game. Having the ability to still do this is unheard of. You know, I, I read something a couple of years ago that the number one job that young people in high school wanted was to be a YouTuber. But what they don't often hear and what I love to talk about, because it's the reality is most social media influencers don't last. Do you have folks like that, whether social influencers or other celebrities, turn to you for advice or counseling? All the time, and I love to share, because I don't want people repeating the same mistakes that I made. And the great thing is, do with my 
wisdom, whatever you want. At the end of the day, it's your life, your career. And what I also like to remind people, it doesn't matter the age, even though social media is a young person's game for the most part, there are the exceptions to the rules and anybody could really break through at any point. When you think about two or three of the people in this world that you admire the most, who stands atop Perez's Mount Rushmore? Number one, Madonna. You know, I grew up obsessed with her. She echoed something that my Cuban immigrant parents instilled in me from a very young age. Madonna repeatedly would say, I'm not the best singer, I'm not the best dancer, I'm not the best looking, but I will work harder than anybody else. And that work ethic is something that I believe I attribute all of my success to. Nobody will sustain success without an incredible work ethic. Number two is Gloria Stefan. Come on, shake your body, baby, do that conga. I know you can't control yourself any longer. Because once again, I'm gay, and I grew up in the 80s and 90s, and I'm Cuban, and I'm from Miami. So she felt to me like a family member. And then third, you know, Gloria, Madonna, and Oprah. If you can believe in yourself and believe that this is the most important thing in your life, you can conquer it. That's like my holy trinity. I call myself an atheist because I love Oprah so much. If you had not had success with Perez Hilton, what do you think you'd be doing right now? Who knows? You know, the older you get, the more you realize you could have a vision for your future and life will be like, nope. When I started, social media didn't even exist. There was no Instagram or TikTok or Snapchat or Tumblr. The only thing that existed back in 2004 was MySpace and Facebook. And that was the very first year that Facebook launched. I consider it my obligation to talk about what's going on in Cuba and to lend support to Roots of Change and organizations that I think are important. The job that I was doing when I started blogging was journalist. I was working for a magazine and I maybe would have still been doing that or I might have been a producer or maybe acting would have taken off or I say yes to opportunity. A rep for Brangelina has denied it. And just because a couple doesn't go to award shows together, which is where I think all this stemmed from, that doesn't mean that they're breaking up. You obviously have broken a lot of stories, but I assume there have been a couple of occasions where you've decided not to run a story. Talk to me about a couple of those cases, one or two really significant, where you ended up not running it. The obvious reason for not running a story is I can't verify it. You know, I don't get it twisted. I've been wrong in the past, but I've never purposefully made up a story. And there's a huge difference there. So I take what I do seriously. I also take the threat of a lawsuit seriously, which is another reason why you don't want to publish something that you can't confirm. Michael Lohan says that Lindsay, who is 30 years old, Lindsay just celebrated her 30th birthday, told him she's expecting her first child. I don't break pregnancy news anymore. You know, women have said to me, that's not your place. That's not a good thing to do. Uh, so I don't do it anymore. But I found out about Katy Perry's pregnancy before she announced that, and I just sat on it. And if it's something in the middle, sometimes I'll do a blind item where I don't reveal what it is, but I give a hint to what it might be. And that covers me legally. And I also don't necessarily, you know, spill it all out there. Hello, world, and introducing my true 10 this is my company. Talk to me a little bit about the CBD business. What brought you into it? COVID and the pandemic pushed me into the CBD business. In 2020, I was in a really bad place. And I put up an Instagram story saying, hey, because I never really tried CBD before 2020. I said, if anybody wants to send me some CBD, please do. And then I had so many people send me <laughs> CBD. It was great. <laughs> but I've realized now, and especially that I work in the industry, not all CBD is created equal. It's not regulated by the FDA. 
So some of them, I looked at the nutritional information and I'm like, God, there's so much sugar in this. And eventually I had these people send me some gummies and I'm like, whoa, these are leaps and bounds better than any I had ever tried before. So I reached out to them and I said, hey, when I think of CBD, there's not one or two brands that are leaders in the field. So that's how my true 10 came to be. I came up with the name because I like that it's got true in it. It truly works. How long have you have you been in business and how has it gone? We've only been in business since August of last year. And it's been a struggle. I like to be honest, but I'm finally getting my way. First, I mentioned the main struggle, like feeling like me, Mr. Loudmouth, is muted and censored in my ability to really talk about my personal experience and how it's helped me. And second, my partners insisted that when we launched, it was just a subscription model. I think I've finally worn them down and convinced them to let me also offer non-subscription purchases on our website. Because I know a subscription is a huge turnoff to a lot of people. People don't want to subscribe to something they haven't tried yet. So what happens to you, Perez, uh, over the next 20 years? Are you expecting to still be doing this? Do you think 20 years from now you'll be doing something different? If you had to predict, what will you be doing 20 years from now? God, 20 years from now, I will be 63. I would love to just be a travel vlogger, to be honest, <laughs> and be just enjoying my 60s, traveling the world. Kendall Jenner is in the headlines for all the wrong reasons. Sweet, what'd she do? She has been spotted going to this fitness class, I think it's Pilates, and parking repeatedly in the handicapped spot. <laughs> Favorite episode on your new podcast? I love every show because we don't have guests. It's just my co-host and I. And oftentimes when you have a podcast where it's two people as the hosts, it's people that have similar views on the world. But my co-host and I, we have completely opposite views. You used your platform for your people to call him out for something. That is bullying. I'm sorry. It, I, and like I wrong. said, it's not It's not even egregious. It, it just it, is. No, but it's not bullying. Bullying, <laughs> it, bullying is... That's agree to disagree because uh, I think I think I think you're uh, wrong. So and it's not an act, it's not a gimmick. He's just this heterosexual white guy who has a different lens when viewing the world. And I think that makes for great content. And I really never know what's gonna happen. And I respect him so we can disagree and it can get heated. And I know that we still care about each other and there's love there. So I would say every episode of the Perez Hilton podcast with Chris Booker is my favorite. <laughs> You think you're gonna stop soon? I want to, yes. The reason that I still work as hard as I do, I like to be honest, I have to. I don't have a few money in the bank. I released a memoir in 2020 and I talk about all the financial mistakes that I made when I was younger. I fantasize, I daydream about having FU money in the bank or if not FU money in the bank, then having made different choices so that I would be able to at least have passive income every month. I still love working, but the main reason I wanna work less is because I wanna be an even better father. Perez, you mind if I do a little uh, rapid fire with you, hit you with five or 10 quick things? Let's do it. Your favorite movie of all time? Showgirls. We take the cash, we cash the check, we show them what they want to see. I love it. Wildest thing you've ever done? I would say being Rihanna's bitch in her s &M music video. <laughs> okay, I like that. Your karaoke song? Total Eclipse of the Heart. And I need you now. you were gonna have a movie made of your life, a biopic, who should star as you? Obviously, Perez Hilton <laughs> should star as Perez Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> a most interesting encounter you had with your girl, Paris Hilton. I think 2006, a long time ago, when she released her album, back when CDs were still what people used in 2006, we were hanging out one night in Las Vegas 
And Paris was the queen of club hopping. And she would do the same thing every time. She had her new album. She would go to the DJ booth, give them the CD and have them play a few songs from her album. And then she would lip sync at every club that we went to. <laughs> The person who you didn't think was going to make it, but ended up becoming a star. Look at Kim Kardashian. Most talented person you've ever met. Um, defined however you want to define talented. My friend, Jewel. Who will save your soul when it comes to the better's mouth? Who's also not just a songwriter, but a poet. She is doing great work in the mindfulness space and helping people. Perez, it's so nice meeting you and uh, just congratulations on so many different levels. I thank you for taking the time and good luck uh, with the company. Thank you. Hey, hope you enjoyed Perez Hilton as much as I did. I've uh, been a big fan of his for a long time. It was fun hearing his backstory, kind of the holy trinity with Madonna and Oprah and Gloria Stefan, knowing who he was at six years old. All that kind of goodness was really fun to see. I'll be curious to see if this business does well for him. I like that he was so honest in saying that it's not easy, nothing is. And I like some of that wisdom he shared as kind of a father. I think he's going to be a good one in that regard. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this show. Remember, every weekday, we got magic. See you soon. Hold up. 